Phil in London. Okay. And he's calling because he had a revelation after the passing of his wife that helped him let go of the last of his religion. You're on with Tracy and Don. Hey. Hey. hey Tracy and Don. Hey. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Great. Great pleasure to uh, talk to you, two of my, two of my favorite speakers. No, no disrespect to no disrespect to the <laughs> others, uh, other folks there. You're, 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 you're all, all right. right. Uh, excellent Favorite ones today, well, anyway. What, uh, what do you got for us, man? <laughs> well, well, well done. Um, I'm actually, while I was listening to the other speakers, I was trying to think right now, how the hell can I whittle it down? Because knowing my luck, I'm going to be the last last person talking. I tend to waffle all night, and I thought I'm not going to talk the show out and run out of time and <laughs> be that guy. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, don't worry. Whittle, we're... I'm going to whittle several things down into one pithy thing, um, and maybe talk about some of the other stuff in, in a future call. Um, what happened was I, I lost my wife, as the uh, screen callers uh, told you. Um, that was back at the end of February, and uh, I, I come from a Jewish background. I come from a Jewish family, uh, but n not a religious background. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been sort of fairly secular and I think I've probably been an atheist for as long as a person can be assigned a position, if you like. Um, pro probably the last time I had I had a belief in anything uh, kind of wooified was when I was too young to, to form a coherent to better, um, understanding right? okay. of anything, maybe about three or four years old. In fact, when I was, um, I think when I was about five years old, my, my first and last and very brief brush with um, uh, 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 of, of religion as something that one could actually believe in as, as, a, as a genuine thing was when I was exposed to Christianity at my, at my school because that was the predominant uh, thing there and back in those days you used to have a, a religious assembly at the start of school and I saw all these kids, the first time I ever saw it, I saw all these little school kids and when they came to pray at the end of the assembly they all did this gesture, you know the thing that Christians do with their hands uh, when they the, pray, the they cross put their hands or the, together. Or the... And I thought, what the fuck are they doing? I'm not, I didn't <laughs> think of that. And I didn't know such language at, at the age of five. <laughs> for my sake. Um, we're not that bad. I still wonder that, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, I was a very literal, li very literal little boy. And uh, I thought, well, hang on a second. Uh, they're, they're, they're praying to God. Uh, not in the way that I've ever seen before. What are they doing with their hands? I thought, ah, I, I, I understand. What it is, they've all got like a little bit of God literally caught inside their hands, <laughs> and that's how they, they address him because they're making sure that little bit of God is inside, and that's that's how my brain <laughs> thought. Very lit literally, I thought, yeah, that's how it was. And so um, it, each kind of religious proposition as I encountered it, normally purely by chance, um, I was so literal minded that it got dismissed out of hand straight to, straight away. And then as things got more sophisticated, the question was simply more sophisticated, but it still got dismissed out of hand. But anyway, fast forward, um, I've I've still sort of hung on to some of my um, so, some of the rituals that my family does. You know, we we observe um, Passover, and the last few years I've I've actually led the Passover, and it's it's partly a, um, a family tradition. It, it it sort of marks the year, and we 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 celebrate years gone by. Uh, but I don't believe in any of the supernatural claims written in the text. Uh, but I can relate to some of the philosophies behind it um, in the same way as I could any great literature, whether it's written by a religious person or, or not. And I've, I've always felt quite settled with, 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 with that. I didn't feel I was, there was any contradiction. But... Um, Attending religious services, I was still, I, I was still able to sort of find myself involved, um, kind of in, a, in 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 a deeper sense that left me a, 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 a sense of of contradiction because I knew I didn't believe in any of the claims. I didn't I didn't feel that I was 
communing with um, a being, a personal God. I didn't believe I was praying to somebody, but I felt that the act of communal worship had some meaning to me. And I wasn't sure whether I was just participating in a, in a social activity, which I could um, justify to myself and, and, and think made sense, or whether I had like a, a one last little bit of woo left in me that wanted to surface in whatever way it, it, it might. Um, it didn't bother me that much, but it was an unresolved question. Um, now, my wife died, unfortunately, end of, end of February. And um, I, I, I mean, for, for, for one thing, you know, regardless of, of the sadness and, and everything I, I felt of it, I, I, I never contemplated for one moment what's, where's she gone? You know, I, I, you know, she stopped breathing. I saw her lying there or her body lying there. And it was it was just a dead body. I didn't see my wife there. I I saw this was where she was five minutes ago. And I didn't. It didn't occur to me. It was not natural for me to ask where is she now. That's the incoherent question. I just thought, well, her life her life has ended. It's it's that old meta. I can't remember what one of you guys, Matt, or someone, um, or maybe one one of you two often gives that metaphor of where does the flame go, go? when the candles right. blown out sure when the can when the candles blown out and it is it is exactly like that i didn't have to struggle to make myself think that that's just my natural way of way of thinking um and in the you know in in, in the weeks that that came following that um, I had, my, my wife was was someone who had been very involved in um, a lot of sort of social things and community um, stuff, and and so I had a lot of people that, and political stuff on the sort of social um, you know side of things. Had been for many many decades, and she was a very very modest person, um, very hard working, and I had a lot of people that approached me and said. You know what, your wife's work and her life meant so much to me. And, you know, now we've got, you know, a certain situation which you helped to bring about, or, you know, she, she's left an influence. And I thought, well, you know. What a wonderful thing I, to say, right? I, it, it was the most, absolutely, absolutely, John. It was the most, most wonderful thing I could possibly hope to hear. And, um, the more the more I thought about it, and and the more I, the, the, I heard these things, the more I thought, well, this is actually the pinnacle of um, what what we should what we should hope for um, after after our life has has completed. That you know we're not merely a memory. I mean, it's good to have good memories, but we have good influences in the world, mm -hmm. and. Um, then it so happened, you know, like a, a couple of weeks later, I had, I can't remember what it was, you know, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses or somebody called on, on my door. And they're, they're a little bit more subtle these days now. In the olden days, they used to show you a picture of paradise and say, do you think this will ever happen? And I'll say, I bloody well hope not. You know, I'm going to be <laughs> actively working against it. Uh, but they're, they're, a bit more, they're a bit more subtle now and they, try, they engage you in a sort of philosophical um, discussion, but I can still spot them in, in, immediately. <laughs> and obviously, they, they were presenting a, a variety of, of, of Christian view on salvation. And one of the, uh, although I'm not re religious, I am still, um, I, I still do come, come from a background where I've developed my philosophical frameworks and vocabulary, partly from, from, the, from the Jewish background. We, we all develop our the structure of the way we formulate our, our worldviews from something, regardless of the actual facts that we believe. And one, one of the biggest differences between the Christian point of view and the Jewish point of view um, is that the Christians talk about personal salvation, what's going to happen to an individual soul, what's going to happen to you after death, you're going to go to heaven and, or hell or whatever it is. And I said, look, for a start, I don't believe in any of that. But if I did, then I, 
I'm not. I don't. I, it's not even natural for me to think in terms of what happens to an individual. It's after death. It's what what a, how a person acts during their life and how they influence the community. And I said, I said, look, I, I said, your initiation of this discussion has just made me realise something really important. And it's kind of the opposite of what you guys were, were hoping, hoping in for. A way. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, That's funny. I said, I said, I said, I said because if a uh, if a dozen of, of the top rabbis and learned Jews were to knock on my door and say, hey, we've just we've just been studying the Torah and the Talmud all night in relation to the question of your wife's um, uh, uh, fate. And, you know, we've studied this very, very carefully and, you know, we can quote this rabbi and that rabbi, rabbi and that rabbi and this and that. And we're very, very certain that she's now in the world to come. I would say, yes, that's great. Nice of you to say so, but that's a metaphysical question. You know, you might as well quote, quote Gödel's incompleteness theorem. And okay, I'll right. take, it's, take, it's, it's take not relevant to our lives, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, however, I've had a few people come to me and say that my wife's influence is still exerting itself, and I would have a hundred thousand of those such things. Um, over anything any of those chief rabbis say. Not because the chief rabbis are not describing a, tr a greater paradise than anything that these people are saying, but um, because A, how the hell do they know? It's an abstract thing, it's a metaphysical thing. But secondly, more importantly, this is part of my revelation, is that the things that these people were reporting um, about the influence my wife had had, and you know the way that you know their 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 their, their sort of social structures are still um, partly benefiting, you know, from what my wife did. Uh, those not only are they not metaphysical, they're actual things in the real world that real people are experiencing. Yeah, I would call uh, that a, a life well lived, right? It's a life well lived, but not only that, it's a life that you can palpably point to and the after effects of it are still palpable and still existent. And so, you know, there, there, there you go. You know, if you want, I, I don't care if I'm immortal or not, but if if I were to care about that, I would care about, well, how do I leave the world after after I leave it? And that was such a powerful feeling. That was more when I said to your screen callers, I may not even have, have expressed this very eloquently. It's quite it's gone midnight here, and I've been been working very hard. But but you know you, you'll have to have to trust me that you know when I thought about it, it was it kind of struck me with the, with the full force. I'm pretty sure that a religious person experiences when he has a so-called religious you know revelation because i thought that is actually yeah what, that what matters my, right yeah it's what matters and not only that it, it, it that's that's what matters about you know our life and and and, and our death uh, and you know so that was a you know that that was that was a tremendous you know tremendous thing so it was it was. It had the full force, as I say, that perhaps a religious person might experience if they were to, in quotes, <laughs> discover that their loved one, or they thought they discovered their loved one, is in heaven at the right hand of God, or whatever bollocks yeah, you can. Yeah. You, so you had a non-religious experience. I had a non-religious, <laughs> non-religious non epiphany, right? Okay. A, a, a non-religious epiphany and, <laughs> and, right. and revelation, and I and I, I told the Jehovah's Witnesses about it, and and they were amazed, you know. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> and they converted <laughs> to atheism well, on the spot. <laughs> I, I think sometimes they, and they all lived happily ever after. All, yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes they they pretend to be a little bit more impressed because that's how, yeah that's how they get you on yeah, their yeah. side. But uh, I think we'll be back, we'll be back tomorrow. We loved your story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or have a pamphlet. Absolute, yeah. An absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for okay. taking my call. Oh, thank uh, you, Phil. Thank you. Yeah. Hope, it, hope it gives some some hope and 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 solace to other people going through a loss. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. That's great. Care. All right, bye. Thank you.
Okay, so we have a few um, quick announcements. Yeah, a few things. So uh, if you're if you're still on the line, I assume that our control room wants you to hold on. So don't hang up.